Okay guys, welcome back and today we are going to unbox and test the Retro FC Plus. I'm pretty certain that the Plus just stands for Extra Gamepad for Two Player for TV Out. Now a lot of people have been talking about this as a good Christmas gift. It's been all over Reddit and it's been recommended. Now it's only about $20. I'll put a link description down below if you want to buy this, if you think this review was good enough that it makes a, a decent Christmas gift or not. And it has, I believe this one is 168 and one games built in. So let's unbox it, check it out. See, is this worthwhile? Like, is this something that you should have under your tree? Let's find out. Okay, so let's open this up. Like the other, like the Bit Boys and so on, there's just a little piece of tape on this one and slides right off. So this would be the console. Let's see what comes with this. Oh, here's our extra game pad. It's actually kind of cool. It, it's, it's small. It's kind of a black see-through, which gives it a really cool look. It doesn't feel horrible, but I mean, it's just a little game pad. Hooks up USB, actually the weird USB, which I thought was odd because it's actually using the old style. And the same thing, the USB charger is the old style. It has a built-in lithium battery. And here is your TV out cables. Too bad it wasn't HDMI, but what do you expect for its price point? And of course we have the wonderful destructions. Now we have all that out of the way, let's take this out of here and see what we have. It's got a bit of weight to it. Here we are. It kind of looks like a Bit Boy or resembles a Bit Boy. Well, I guess a Game Boy in the end. And there's a door back here with a battery in it. I'm going to power it up. Wow. That is some interesting sound there. Okay, there is a slide volume control on the side. The top has your power, a USB, and your headphone jack. So that USB port, I'm guessing, is your charger and your external gamepad port. Uh, the headphone jack will be your TV out, and of course your power switch. Other than that, there's nothing else other than your battery which looks like one of them Nokia batteries in the back here, which reminds me again of the BitBoy. Okay. So I'm going to guess here because it's all in Chinese when it starts up. I'm going to hit start on this top one. And there we go. The top one is your English. So what do we got here? We got Kung Fu Panda. Oh, I might as well try out the very first game. Looks like a Mario knockoff. Oh my god. It is a Mario knockoff. That is pretty funny. The same sounds and everything. I gotta say, so far, the controls are actually very responsive. But wow, what a knockoff. That is hilarious. Okay, let's see if this takes us back to the main menu. And of course, now we have to hit English again. Oh my goodness. Is this actual turtles or is it something else? No, oh, no, Konami. Okay, so it's turtles.
Let's hear the sound. I guess his screen is pretty decent for what it is. But we're going to go back to a different game. I found that played a little bit. I mean, oops. It didn't play bad. It, uh... I don't know if the sound... I'm going to try and find a, a game that I know very well. To justify the sound. So we're going to do Double Dragon 2. And I guess the sound isn't horrible. I mean, it's not something you can write home about, but... Let's try something else. It's kind of annoying that every time you go back to the menu, you have to always hit that English. Let's hope this is actually the real Mario Brothers. Okay. I mean, there's got to be a reason why people are recommending it, right? Sorry, guys. Playing through a viewfinder here. on the side. Very responsive. The controls work very well. So I'm very impressed with that. Um, so far I have to take a look at the game lineup more to find out if it's actually uh, worthwhile knowing that this is going to be something that you... Oops, I did it again. Knowing that it's something that you're going to want to play. We'll go backwards here. Okay guys, I want to try this on the television because I want to see what the TV out looks like. And we're not going to use the Elgato. We're going to use it screen versus screen. So I'm just going to film the screen so I can see what the outcome, what the actual picture is. Not upscaled through the Elgato. What does it look like? So let's give that a shot and let's try that two-player joystick and see if it's any good. Okay, so as you can see, the picture quality isn't terrible. I was kind of hoping that player two controller would allow me to control it, but it doesn't. So I still have to use the unit to select and to go through the games. So let us just, I don't think it will work now, nope. So player two is just that, a player two. Let's take something here where we'll double dragging it. Which I find odd because it does have start and stop on it. But none of it is responsive right now. But the picture quality out on this TV is actually pretty phenomenal. I'm very impressed. So we'll give it that. So we're going to go two player. Now forgive me because I'm going to have to move in here. You might see me. I'm not sure. Nope. There is a bit of static in the sound. But the joystick works, it's responsive. For such a little dinky joystick, oops. I gotta figure out my controls here. I think I'm beating up my own guy. Oh really. Plus 
my guy. So as we can see here, and now do I have control? It's like the start and stop mean nothing on this thing. It's funny how it's there. Maybe it's just a controller from something else. Who knows? But it does work. It's very responsive. Do you hear this? There, I played with the cable a little. And it seems to clear up. But that's just what I'm saying. Like, you're definitely getting what you pay for here. But overall, picture quality is actually very good. Pac-Man again. Off we go. I am impressed with it. For the money that I spent... Uh-oh. I'm a dead boy. For the money spent on it, it's actually not bad. Um, I don't, there's much more that I would probably recommend, there's no doubt about that. Which was an easier way to go through all the games. As you can see here, look, front line. See that, the icon here? Some of this stuff looks really cheesy, but... In the end, it actually is the game, and I love Frontline, so th these types of games are awesome. Oh, when you know how to play. Darn my short bullets. Die, dude. I died. So, it looks like it's actually the original games. We're going to try a few more just to make sure. Again, here's Jackal. I want to see Jackal on the screen. So this is, like I said, Jackal is one of my favorite games. I love it. And the fact that I can actually just plug this little console in, play on my TV, unplug it, go to my car, play on the internal screen, or whatever it would be. Can't I run these guys over? Yes, I thought. Yeah, this is working really well for what it is, oops, and for how cheap it is. This is actually very responsive. I can see why people have actually recommended it as a, okay, so it's leaving off where I was. I can see where people actually recommended this as a console to buy and try. Um, I guess price is a big thing. There is, and I'm going to show you guys something, because I, it's reminding me of something all over again. Let's try out one more game that has a really weird icon, just so I can see uh, if it is, like, uh, Rocket Man. It, it is the original games, guys, so we're, we got to be happy about that for sure. I'm recommending this for its price tag for sure. Oh, forgot about that. Eh! Run, run! Oh. Haven't played this in a long time, clearly. Yeah! Why me? Why me? Uh-oh. Seen that coming. Clearly I suck at Mega Man. So again, as we can see, it is actually... So, okay. I'm impressed that way. Oh, forgot about that.
Guys, remember a while back, many, many while back, <laughs> I was playing around with some knockoff consoles, I had some bad luck and so on, and anyway, one of the things that I did pick up and start playing around with were some handhelds. Now, I don't think I did any videos on them, but when I turned this on, and I got the sound, I want to show you something. A little faster, same audio, smaller screen, doesn't have the TV out, and it doesn't have an extra second player joystick port. But this one's 268 games versus 168. Now how much of this was actually uh, pretty much the same or not, it had pretty much the same games on it. Super Contra, everything was on it. And these were from Top Hatter, and I think I paid $10, $15 delivered. Now, said that, if I had my time back, of course, I wouldn't have bought these at all. I would have bought this one. One, this takes three AAA batteries in the back door, not rechargeable. It feels crappy. The plastic is absolute garbage. Um, but overall, it plays well, the screen's good, and it's very responsive. So it isn't a bad product. Now with this today, being at the 20 or $30 mark, depending on where you get it, this unit has got a bit more weight to it. The plastic feels much better and it is recommended. I do recommend it for a $20 game console. But if it was up to me, I would still probably look at a BitBoy V3. That's just my opinion. I found this product working well. It uh, didn't give me any grief. The overall vibrance of the screen, the actual gameplay, everything was pretty spot on. I wouldn't be upset owning this at all. In fact, I guess now I do own one. If it was more expensive and it was like a $50 item, I would definitely go into the BitBoy V3. Right now the BitBoy V3 is on sale for $29.99 USD. Of course, one thing that I liked over the BitBoy with this was the larger screen. This has a three and a half inch TFT screen that is actually pretty impressive when you think about the money you're spending. It didn't really ghost too much for, for a cheap screen. Um, for an overall product, it is designed and looks and feels like a BitBoy. Uh, it just doesn't have a memory card slot. My overall thing was just to really test the product. But I did want to try the second player joystick and give my thoughts and everything on that as well. It's got more buttons, of course, than it actually uses, which I thought was kind of cool because it definitely is used for something else. It kind of reminds me of maybe like a Neo Geo portable, that, that little desktop thing or whatever they have. It just gives me that it, this is definitely used somewhere else. This is a see-through, like a skeleton black. It looks good. It feels good. The plastic actually feels pretty decent. And it was very responsive. I had no issues with it whatsoever. The only downside that I thought with this was the start and the uh, the start and, and select were useless in this, which leads me to believe that this controller was not actually meant for this, but it does function as a second player controller. I would have really liked it if this company had made this a full function controller, whereas you could lay this down and it gives you that extra bit of distance from your television. Now, the hookup to the TV is just your standard red and yellow, so audio and video, and to a little mini headphone jack right here. I found that I had to fiddle with it a little bit to get static, and what I mean by static was static sound. The sound quality was kind of horrendous there for a minute. I touched it and moved it, and it went away. But if you're going to be playing it and moving it around, I'm guessing that this might end up being a problem. Other than that, if you're not buying it for the TV out, which the TV out did work pretty good, and it looked very clear. But if you're not recommend, or, or if I'm not recommending it for the TV out overall, then I think you have a pretty solid $20 game console. Anyway guys, I hope you liked the review. It's a very inexpensive Christmas gift that I think, or a gift for any, or just someone who wants to travel and play some of the vintage games. It is definitely focused around NES, Super NES gameplay. And it worked very well. I didn't see any slowdown or anything weird going on with the games. 
The sound quality in some aspects were quite not bang on or anything, but hey, that's to be expected. What do you want from a $20 handheld? Guys, let me know what you think. Have you played around with the Retro FC? Do you have a Retro FC? Uh, is there another product in this price range that you recommend? If so, please let me know and I will forward this information to any of the viewers that were looking for this as a review or someone that's hoping to get a decent Christmas gift. I think this is okay. I would actually buy it for my kids for Christmas. No questions whatsoever. I think it performed very well for its price tag. So guys, till next time, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for next up and coming episodes. Please like, share, and subscribe. And liking and slamming and slamming and slamming that like button makes me like things even more. So guys, game over.